This semester, I've been TFing a class called Foundations of Biological Diversity. One of the topics we cover is how life cycles of the earliest plants started to adapt to life on land. Mosses that exist today are great examples of intermediate strategies between the earliest plants that evolved in the water and the land plants that dominate today's landscape. Algae are aquatic, so they can use water for both fertilization and dispersal. The major groups of land plants, both angiosperms and gymnosperms, on the other hand, use air to carry their pollen for fertilization and also to carry their seeds to help them disperse out into the environment. Mosses, though, are an evolutionary lineage intermediate between these two groups. They still use water to disperse their sperm before fertilization, but they figured out a way to take advantage of the air for dispersal. They don't have seeds, but they send spores out into the wind. So this cartoon shows the typical moss life cycle. The green spongy thing we're familiar with is the haploid stage that dominates the moss life cycle. In most other land plants, the diploid stage is dominant. The job of this gametophyte is to make gametes, both sperm and egg. Water splashes the sperm from the male gametophyte, or antheridia, to the female gametophyte, or archegonium. Fertilization occurs out at the top of the female gametophyte. Out of that grows a f the diploid sporophyte. This sporophyte is brown and non-photosynthetic. Its job is to grow just a bit higher than that of the gametophyte, which needs to stay low to the ground so it doesn't try out. So it grows up and releases haploid spores that will hopefully find somewhere to land and grow up into a new gametophyte generation, starting this whole process over again. So I took this video on a field trip to Harvard Forest that shows the air dispersal of spores from a moss sporophyte. It made me realize that I had never really noticed any evidence of moss reproduction in the wild. So I went for a walk in the woods looking for just that. I saw a few types of moss. I saw lots of sporophytes, mostly dried out and empty. And I also saw what I think are male moss antheridia and female archegonia not yet grown up into sporophytes. So, the next time you're out in the woods, don't ignore the moss at your feet hanging out with those humble lichen, and see if you can find some sporophytes in addition to the regular old green gametophytes.